Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 515. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Matt Kennedy. Today is June 14th, or not 14th, 27th. Okay, as you can tell, I have a special guest. This is Matt Kennedy. Depending on how long you've been paying attention to Anglican politics, and you remember a blog uh, a couple years ago called Stan Firm, this is one of the bloggers on Stan Firm. Uh, he and I have traveled a, a couple places together. He was at the first GAFCON uh, when I was there. He was in New Orleans following the the news. And uh, when he was with Stan Firm, they sent him around to a couple of different places. But he was an active blogger, and he still today posts frequently on Facebook. And you're probably a fan of Matt Kennedy in some uh, shape or form. Uh, or not. Or, or not. Or not. <laughs> it, it depends on your, your yeah. theology. Um, you joined Cana, which is uh, a Nigerian offshoot of Anglicanism that's here in America. And people have been following Cana kind of uh, broke up and into three different divisions. And some joined the ACNA, which you're a part of. Some are uh, keeping the roots strongly into Nigeria. One of those dioceses that are doing that is called Trinity, and they're going to have some new bishops uh, consecrated soon, next month. And one of those bishops, you have discovered his theology is a little bit more prosperity than uh, you and I are probably used to. And you've been in communication with him. You certainly post your thoughts on Facebook. And it went high enough up the channels that the Church of Nigeria said, listen, it's probably time to file a complaint. And so we know what you're talking about and see the references to what sermons you're talking about so we can read it. And now the last couple of days is enough going back and forth again that it's it's reached Anglican Inc., Anglican Unscripted level. We need to talk. Which is a high uh, level. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> the highest level. <laughs> it can't be. So uh, first, welcome to the program. And let's talk a little bit about what the prosperity gospel is and kind of how it's gotten into um, our lexicon, especially here in America. It's not surprising to see it around the world, but... Yeah, it took hold here in the 80s, and, and um, it, it stuck. Sure. I mean, the prosperity gospel essentially immunitizes the eschaton. That is, you know, we as Christians look forward to the day when Christ returns, and there will be peace on earth, and all things will be set to right, and there will be no poverty or hunger or sickness or death, all those things will have passed away. The, the prosperity gospel teaches that you can take hold of, the, of those promises now, and the means by which you take hold of them is, is through faith. Jesus died to to not just save you from the consequences of your sins and to, and to save you from the power of sin, but also to give you a healthy body here and now, and to give you uh, prosperity in your in your work. And if you don't have those things, the prosperity gospel teacher will tell you it's just because you haven't exercised enough faith power. That's also an interesting point, because the faith is not directed toward the person or work of Christ, but toward the power that Christ promises. Yeah. It simply comes down to the belief that God wants what's best for you, or does God want what's best for him? And it, you, yeah. you, you, once you hit that separation line, does God want you to be rich? Yeah, probably not. And it, This yeah. is talked about pretty extensively in First yeah. Timothy 6 and other places where... Um, your, your gainfulness is the contentment, not the treasure. Right. And so I mean, he does, in a larger sense, want your happiness. But the, the fact is that we tend to think that our happiness lies in money or or in a good, healthy body, whereas Christ knows that our happiness lies in Him. And sometimes to find that kind of happiness means taking away things that we rely on in the world and and letting us go through times of suffering so we draw closer to Him. And we find that also the Beatitudes, kind of the, the first teaching Absolutely. that Jesus uh, provided to us. So let's talk a little bit about your presentment of uh, heresy accusations and what's happened since then. Well, I, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, or maybe you mentioned it, that uh, this has been ongoing, an ongoing concern. I first encountered uh, the bishop-elect when he was a bishop-elect about a year ago on Facebook, 
saying things like, posting things like, I declare all poverty banished from my house in Jesus' name. And it, it's a typical way of speaking that you find in prosperity gospel circles and in word of faith uh, teaching, which is very closely related to prosperity gospel. Word of faith teachers believe your words carry innate power, and especially in the Christian realm, if you join to your words the phrase, in Jesus' name, it has an exceptional amount of power. So, Jesus' name is magic. Yes, yes. it becomes a talisman, right? Mm. Um, and, so, and so I noticed that he was saying a bunch of these things. Um, I made a post about the prosperity gospel on my Facebook page. He came in and objected strongly and strenuously to what I said, and in this, there's a long line of, of comments, and he continued to say things that are right down the line, prosperity gospel, word of faith, and he even posted links to Benny Hinn, uh, a, Benny, a Benny Hinn video, and told many of us who are on the thread that we need to watch this man of God and and, and learn from him. After that thread, I, I was, was closed, but I remember I, I sent a note said, hey, would you care to recant this? This is, this is some dangerous stuff that you're teaching, and you're wearing a collar, you shouldn't be doing that. And he said, no, I should repent, and he says, I hope, I hope you report me because then we can have a have a trial and have this all all, all settled. Um, so after that, not only I but a number of, of, of priests who were also in Cana at the time uh, did send in formal complaints to his then ecclesial authority, which was in Cana East. Um, and then it kind of we didn't hear anything. And the next thing we hear about uh, was that he was leaving Cana East, and he's now in like you say Trinity Diocese. And then the next thing we hear is he's been elected bishop in, in Trinity Diocese. So I thought this was horrible. I, uh, I, I, I thought, though, maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he's had a change of sure. heart yeah. um, or something. I couldn't imagine that he would be elected bishop with those kinds of teachings. So, in fact, I was told that he had, he had assured... Uh, a bishop in the Church of Nigeria that he had repented, so I said, I said okay, well, that, that's good. Then someone sent me a link to his sermon from Pentecost 2019, which was, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, something like yeah. that. That would be and, recent. <laughs> and I listened to it, and it was all there. I mean, everything. It just it was the classic contours of prosperity gospel teaching and word of faith speaking right there. In fact, he was telling his, his congregation or the congregation to which he was preaching, I think it wasn't his, but it was, it was a guest there. And unless you're going around uh, healing the sick and raising the dead, raising the dead, you are not meeting Jesus' expectations for you, because he said that whatever, the work I do, you should do greater work even than me, and you're not doing them, so what's wrong with you? <laughs> you need to have more faith. Um, so I, I, uh, I posted that sermon. I did a, a podcast in which I went through the sermon line by line. My wife transcribed it. And that's, that got Anglican Inc.'s attention, which meant we hit the big time at that point. And, and then uh, you guys put a link to that, uh, that podcast on, on one of your articles. And I think that's what, what got some attention into, into the higher areas of the Church of Nigeria. And the bishop called me and asked me to put out a, uh, a formal accusation, which I did. Um, and we just recently got the, the news. The so the Church in Nigeria has responded. They say that, you know, this is all cleared up now. You know, well, Matt, we're glad you said something. We looked at what he said, and we, we talked to him, and we feel better having talked to all three parties that this is all cleared up, and he will uh, n certainly not preach the prosperity gospel again, and we can go on from here. And I'm like, I don't think that's what the intention is. The intention here is you've done it in the past. You need to repent and recant. And that's part of how this works. Because so if you're a bishop, you need to be beyond, what's that word? starts with R, reproach. <laughs> right. A Gene Robinson flashback, sorry. And so um, I don't think this is beyond reproach in any way, shape, or form. Well, I know. I think there are two good things about the response, and and that is that he was the, the primate of all Nigeria, who is who is very much opposed to the prosperity gospel, for which I'm very thankful. He spoke out against it at the Gascon last yep. time you were there, I think, 
and um, and he's no he's no friend of that teaching. The he required that the bishop elect uh, make an undertaken uh, phrase undertakement or undertaking yes. to undertaking. To, um, an undertaking to not preach it again, which is good. That's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and to apologize for his inadvertent preaching it before, which acknowledges, although it's subtle and you know strong, not as strong as I would like, it acknowledges in making that apology. He has to acknowledge that he had, in the past, preached the prosperity doctrine, which he hadn't acknowledged up to that point. So okay. He's had to say he's had to at least confess. Yes, I did this. I'm sorry, and I promise not to do it again. Uh, now, you're right about the troublesome aspect of it. I mean, it, it's one thing to say, yes, I've sinned, yes, I've committed an error, but really, I think that before you'd want to put someone in a high office like that, you'd want to have, you want to see the fruits of repentance being borne out and say, okay, well, this guy now has a track record, not just of saying I repent of this, but also of, we can see his teaching is really solid now, it's really good. Um, so it's a, I think it's a danger to, to put him in at this point. Um, yeah. Well, I want to talk about kind of the bigger picture. You know, we talked about the prosperity gospel is alive and well in America. What is it like in the seminaries now in Nigeria and other parts of uh, Africa? Uh, do they suffer from this as well? Is this being taught uh, or adopted uh, into the seminaries? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I have heard people say, and I who are knowledgeable about this. It's not that if you ask the average person who is trained there and, and, and has gone through the process there, if you ask that person, do you believe in the prosperity gospel, they would all say, no, no, of course not. But then when you would listen to them preach, you'd hear you know, the prosperity gospel. And, and that's because in large part they may not know what exactly it is. And they're not intending, they're inadvertently preaching it. <laughs> They're not intentionally setting out to commit heresy, but they just haven't been equipped to understand or recognize what that particular heresy is. Yeah, and another thing I want to be sure that we're not talking about the three streams of Anglicanism here. This isn't oh, right. you, this isn't something we're talking about. Whether it's a, a Holy Spirit thing, whether it's a uh, evangelical thing, whether it's a uh, Anglo-Catholic thing, this is more strictly. Uh, the gospel of whether you know God's intention for man. And, the uh, yeah, when you first started the show, you said that everyone was in some way my fan, and see, this <laughs> this is one area where <laughs> I, 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 I probably will not be my fan because I am what they call a cessationist. Sure. I don't believe the prophecy and, and and tongue speaking continue. I believe God still performs miracles and does mighty works and all those kind of things, but, but I just don't believe the sign gets continued. Understand. Um, so I've, I've posted about that, and you know, I've gotten some, in some, some debates with my friends and brothers and sisters who are charismatic, uh, who I love, and I hope they love me. I'm not for sure, but I hope they do. They and, do. and uh, you do and love them. them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's an in-house debate. You know, that's, that's a debate we can both open the scriptures and say, "Look, I don't believe that this is that you're right about this," but that does not impinge the gospel in any way. You can be a charismatic. No. And you can be a cessationist, and you can both preach the same gospel, have the same Lord, same baptism, that you're, you're headed to the same place, and we can all we can even worship in the same building. It's it's the, the difference here, though, with the prosperity gospel is that the, is that you're, you've be you've made you've taken Christ away from the center of the gospel and made wealth <laughs> and prosperity and health the center of the gospel, and you access it by this kind of magical use of what they call faith, and both charismatic and cessationists, both Anglo-Catholics and Evangelicals, would, right-thinking ones, would say, no, this is not this is not the truth. I do want to thank you for your time. Uh, people don't know this, but we had one heck of a time getting you set up uh, for the Wirecast <laughs> stream here. Uh, basically, I send a person a link, they click the link, it opens up on their uh, iPhone or their, their browser, yeah. and all is well. And... Uh, Thanks. Not so. <laughs> right. For those non-sensationalists, you would say it was an, a satanic attack of some sort. But no, we don't go there. <laughs> Poor kid. Poor Matt. I'm just having fun with him. So I do want to thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully if there's more news thank on you. this, uh, we can go forward. But 
uh, you know, as it stands, he's still going to be uh, consecrated sometime next uh, in July next month. So we'll see what happens. It's an ongoing story. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Matt Kennedy. And you've been watching episode 515 of Anglican Unscripted. <laughs>